Hi, Davide here, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, yes, 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 the impertinent collector. That's me. Oh, you already know that. Now, to a certain degree, one could argue that my collection is nothing more than a schizophrenic catalog of objects that I'm randomly collected and acquired through the years. And it's true to a certain degree that each object has its own story to tell. But also, most of the objects, they have some sort of reference. They might remind me of an holiday, of an old friend, of a family member, of a particular place I've been. And sometimes I acquire them simply because they remind me of something, but I can't exactly tell what it is. But you know what? Some object seems to be appearing from nowhere, like they're floating. They come to me with no previous references. And this particular object take me down the proverbial rabbit hole, where like a modern Alice in Wonderland, I find myself in an upside down world where what is likely familiar is not appearing in the right order and where in fact my set of values are literally turned upside down. Now, one of such objects is the item I'm gonna share with you today. And he takes us back to China in the 3rd century BC, where some sort of semi-religious, philosophical, cultural and folkloristic movement was taking hold and he was starting to create his own mythological figure. And so that movement is what is known as Taoism. But what is Taoism? Well, it goes back to Tao. Eh, and what is Tao? Tao means the path, the way. And there are two Tao. There is an inner Tao that relates to the path of each individual. And then there is an outer Tao that is the environment. And when those two Tao, the outer and the inner, are aligned and in perfect balance, the environment flourish and the individual gets to unlock some sort of superpowers. And there is no superpower greater than immortality. And so today is the story of Baxia, or better known as the Eight Immortals that are part of the tradition and the folklore of Taoism across Asia. In China, in Japan, in Taiwan, in Malaysia, even in Sydney, Australia, you come across some sort of Buddhist temples that don't really have Buddha at the center. You have these strange things. And that's where things get a bit confusing for people like me, you know, the poster child of Western culture. Yes, because in Taoism there is no church, there is no dogma, there is no Ten Commandments, there is no Bible, there is no Gospel. There is no sainthood. And let me tell you, 
our immortals are no saint. And because there is no dogma, what you actually have, you have a situation in which the master can answer the same questions with two completely different answers, depends on who is asking. And so, who are these eight immortals that are part of the God pantheons of Taoism? Well, let me tell you, you couldn't find a more engaging and entertaining gang of misfits. Poor me brought up with St. Francis, St. Anthony, St. Jerome, and from an early age, Santa Dorothea, where I went to do my primary school with the nuns, I now find myself with these eight figures who have achieved immortality. And when I'm looking at the characters of these figures, I'm basically confounded. Why? Well, because we have a general that has been defeated and he's barely escaped with his life in the heat of battle. We have a dropout who fails not once but twice the imperial examination that would help him to become an high official within the imperial court. We have some sort of a medium that had the power to leave his body and yet one day he wandered too far and he could only come back in the body of an old man who recently died. We have a virgin. Yeah, because hey people, you need a beautiful virgin who doesn't sleep with anybody. And then you also have some sort of androgynous cross-dresser, transgender, street artist. Nobody knows if he's a man or if he's a woman. You have a bureaucrat that has gone mad and has turned into a clown. And across the city, riding a donkey backwards. You have an alchemist. And you have a poet and a musician. These are our incredible figures of the eight immortals. And if I forget one of them, I'll add it now to the comments. So, these particular characters are no saints. And they are no saints because they are ultimate demonstration that whoever you are, if you balance your inner Tao with the outer Tao, you can in fact become immortal like them. And so today is the story of the founding member of Baxia. Zongli Guan. And this is him. Zongli Guan. And Zongli Guan is instrumental in bringing the old immortals together. Why? Because poor dropout our Liu Dongbin has just failed his second exam and he has let down his father and his mother. His world 
is crumbling down. And he walks into a tavern. And in this tavern, he meets an old, jolly, fat, good man who invites him to have supper with him. And so he does. But as soon as he has the first sip, he falls into a deep, deep sleep. And in that sleep, he dreams that he just passed the exam. He has excelled to the point where the highest official is giving, me, giving him an extraordinary position. And within that position, he meets the most wonderful woman who is the daughter of the richest merchant and she becomes his wife and together they have a son and they have a daughter and so pleased is the imperial administration that he turned prime minister and that's where things started to unravel because Liu Dongbing, in his dream, is being accused of malpractice. And the emperor cast him away in a forgotten village. And in that village, his wife started to have an affair with another man. And his son and daughter are killed by bandits. And he loses all. And he finds himself dying poor on the streets. And right before he dies, he wakes up and he realizes that the old fat, funny man who invited him for supper is no other than the 700 years old. Zongli Guan. And he has seen his whole life, all the things that his ambition drove him to aspire to, and all the things that could go wrong. And he says to himself, that's not the life I want to live. And he begs Zongli Guan to teach him the secret of Taoism and how to become an immortal. And he will become the leader of the immortals so that in these Taoist temples, the primary figure that you will see is not my dear Zongli Guan that I probably overpaid because I got caught up in a bidding war at an online auction. But is in fact Lu Dongbin who becomes the leader of Baxia and the Eight Immortals. And so, where does he leave us? Well, he leaves us to this very important lesson. Each one of us has his own path. And yet the environment is more or less the same for everybody. To the point that one can argue that the outer Tao is nature itself. And we need to live in harmony with nature. And there is posterity in this concept of aligning your personal ambition to the natural order of nature. And so, as I leave you with the blessing of Zongli Guan, I have two questions for you. What is your Tao? Or what is your path? And the second question, slightly minor in importance, have you subscribed to my channel? Do you really want to send me back to a 9 to 5 office job? If we don't and you enjoy this content, subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Thank you and good.
Rubai from Zhongli Guan and one of his latest disciples hoping to unlock the supernatural powers of YouTube.